what was before Barnsley? Uh, I know that Man City were involved at some point. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, before, Bar like going from school days, I was at Everton till I was about 11 or 12. And then I sort of, I wasn't keen on the structure really. Um, not allowed to play for school and stuff. I think it was just the start of it then. So I sort of, I, I went away from it. I went and got, um, I went and got myself a pony. I had done a bit of show jumping. I had a motocross bike, done a bit of that. Um, and I just, I was just a kid. Like loads of lads, all the kids who were like local. I still played for my Sunday league team and all the kids who were local were like, oh, I can't believe you're like left footy for like show jumping or motocross. I was like, I haven't. So then I'm just enjoying myself. Yeah. And um, so as I got a bit older, then I got to like 15, 16. That's when I realised, you know, that's, that's the time to go. So I went on trial to, um, I was at, played a game for Runcorn under 18 when I was 15. Um, and I went on, from that, I went on trial to Man City and Everton asked me back. So I went on trial to both of them and then I, cho I had a choice and I chose Man City. Wow. And then I had six like fantastic years there, like a real, a real ground. I had a, I had a good group of lads um, in the youth team, obviously coming through the ranks and stuff. And then I got into the first team around, I'd say, I was probably about 18. I started like really getting involved with them. And then 18, 19, 20, I'd made my debut at, uh, way at Notts County it was on um, on the Twin Towers Day, 2001. Um, yeah, we were in a hotel when that when that um, tragedy happened. So um, I made me debut that night, scored after four minutes ahead, I believe it or not. <laughs> One of many in my career. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, and then I was around the first team for a good while, but I was travelling to all the games. I was like the left out, I was on the bench. You know, it, it's fantastic experience. So I went to all the big grounds, um, sat on the bench, but I just didn't feel like I was playing enough. And I got to the age of like 21, 22. And then Keegan pulled me in one day and he said, um, Barnsley have been on the phone. Paul Hart's been on the phone. Um, he wants to go up there and have a chat. They want to build the team around you for next season. And I went, do you know what? I said, I'm at that age now. That's the decision. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and have a chat with him. And that's what I did. What sort of so the call from from Paul? Unbelievable to think you worked, you worked under Keegan. That is incredible. Any any good Keegan stories? Any good interactions with, with him? Yeah, I had loads. Some some not so great, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> um, one of them was I, I was um, I, I was on fire pre season. I'd scored like I've, I've never never a sense forward and I never really classed myself as a goal scorer. But I was playing in behind um, in the number ten hole position. And I, w I was literally on fire. I felt good. I was playing with, like, obviously good players, Nicholas and Elka being one of them, and it was, it was around me. So you, you, you're mixing with some top boys. I felt, I felt good about myself. So I played against Rochdale on, um, on the Tuesday night pre-season. Scored another two. He won 6-1, set up, with, I think, two assists and two goals out of the six. I've then gone to Tranmere on the Wednesday night, um, Plate, he said again, would you just play? Because I was a young, fit, you know, like, so I said, yeah, I'll play. So I played 45 minutes, scored again. Um, and then coming on the Thursday, like, I was flying. I'd scored three that week at two assists. Won, like, we won't be Tammy at 6 1. So we won, like, 12, a aggregate of 12, um, 12 1 over the two games. And um, he says, you going on loan? I said, no. Oh, Brilliant. My agent had spoke to me at the time. He said Burnley and Crystal Palace were interested. I was like, oh, brilliant. Look, you know. And he went, uh, well, I don't think it's them. I was like, well, I spoke to my agent yesterday and he said, like, if, if nothing happens here, obviously, depending on going, going into the season coming, Burnley and Palace are interested. He said, right, okay, go home. I'll give you a call this afternoon. So <laughs> I went home. He gives me a call. He says, shoot. So I went, yeah. He says, uh, you're going to Rochdale. I went, Rochdale, like no disrespect to Rochdale, but at the time I was flying, I just beat them six six uh, one yeah. and set up two and scored two. I went Rochdale. He went, um, they were in League Two at the time. He went, yeah. I went, um, why is that? I said I could go to Palace or Burnley if I'm going to go anywhere. He went, um, you either go there, and I, I probably should cut this a little bit short. You either go there and play, or I won't play in reserves and I'll ruin you. I was wow. like. Right. What time do you want me there, Gaffer? He went uh, <laughs> ten o'clock for half ten start. I went, no problem. So I went there, got four yellow cards and a straight red in the fifth, and got sent back. <laughs> the the, fir the first um, the first 
experience exactly. out of Barnsley, really. I actually come on against four Man City at, at Oakwell um, a year, or, a couple of years before. I don't know if you remember, Dad Nookery was absolutely sensational on the night and he he destroyed um, Carl, is it Carl Fagan? Carl Regan, uh, yeah. Carl Regan, yeah. Carl he, Regan, he destroyed yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Regan, yeah. Um, and I come on for about 20 minutes there. So I knew the ground and I knew like the atmosphere. And then, I mean, just before I come, I don't know if you remember, I was on loan at Hartlepool. And yeah. um, I'd gone up to Hartlepool and we played Barnsley at Oakwell. And um, the game finished, I think, 2 all. Chris Lumsden got sent off for elbowing me in the face. Neil Austin gave me a bloody nose and smashed my face all over the sideboard. Um, so I was getting I was getting booed a lot that game because because Hartlepool where they are I drove to the game with with a couple of my mates I met the, the, the lads there and uh, as I've come out after the game security guards have gone in you you can't go that way um, there's loads of people waiting for you so they opened the bottom gates for me out the, from the players entrance I had, to, I had to basically drive out to the right rather than going up to the left so I drove out to the right drove round the back of the ground and out and away. Next minute, obviously, Paul Art, I get the, the call that Paul Art wants to have a chat with me. So I turned up then. It was a little bit of a mixed reaction. I'm sure some Reds fans will agree. There was a bit of a mixed reaction for a while, I think. I don't think I ever won all of them over. For appearances, which is... Yeah. Well, it's any team, you must have done something right to, to play over 100 times for them. Out of your 18 goals, then, do any stand out in your head that, that you think... Oh, yeah. Yes, and I you know I think I scored my best goal. Well, one of them um, at home against Forest. Um, right. It was I think it was Devaney's drove down the left, and then I I I was on the right, but obviously like used to wander all over. So like a, like a little git, the manager's nightmare keep wrecking the shape. But <laughs> I've I've like jogged across the box. He's played it into me like a, a forward pass. I flicked it around the corner to Hazy through the back of my legs. He played it back to me and a left foot struck it into the far corner. And it was it was even better because I ran over to Andy Ritchie. All that week I'd been practicing on my left foot, just like, right. like with no keeper, just smashed it into the goal. And he was like, any chance of you using that? You haven't, I've never seen you use it. And I'd done that the next day. So it was even better. So I ran over to him pointing my <laughs> left foot. That's brilliant. Uh, Carl mentioned your supporters player of the year. Barnsley is a wonderful place to live. But it builds itself on a certain type of character in terms of we're very working class. It's all about uh, effort over skill at times, really. Um, would you argue that the way you play fit, Barnsley, in terms of your, your work ethic and, and, and not giving up and, and that fight? Would, would you argue that that's probably why players vote, uh, fans voted your player at year? I, I, absolutely, 100%. Like, I, I would... I would work hard in training. I would work hard every single game. I might not always play the best. The position I played was, I, a lot of emphasis was on me was to open doors for goals. Um, now, when you've got that type of player, I'm quite happy taking the flack, but I've, you've, to try it, I'm not a sideways passer. I'd always go yeah. for that killer pass. If it goes through, it's a goal. If not, I'd give it away. Do you know what? I'll, I, I, I'll take that on the chin. No problem. Some players can't. I enjoyed it. And I, I'll, I'll guarantee you I always worked 110% in a game. And maybe that's why you were so enjoyable to watch, the, the fact that you were 100% in and you're willing to make them gambles and willing to make them moves. We'll also talk about your favourite games. I'd like to have a good guess, but I'll leave it to you. What's, what's your favourite game in a Barnsley shirt? I had one early, early on against um, QPR. I think it was quite... It wasn't personal. It wasn't like how I played. I just remember it. I think it was 3-2. And um, Murphy, the left-back, we had on loan from some from Middlesbrough, I think. He scored a free kick winner. That was a, that was a class game. That was right. in the end of the first season I arrived. Then the, the next ones, I'd say one that stands out is Bristol City at home, the first the home game of Paul Arts, new season. Okay. Um, we won two one. I scored two, so it's obviously a good one. But I remember the atmosphere. We had like fourteen thousand there that night, and it was it was. I remember thinking, oh, I'm right up for a season. It tailed off a little bit as the season went. We weren't doing as good as what we'd planned to start. Of understandable, course. but yeah, the Bristol City one was um, was a classic. Yeah, uh, and obviously we'll allude to the the Cardiff game. Um, yeah. Just, Obviously, just, a bit of a bit of a difficult one for me, to be honest. 
Okay. The Cardiff one. Um, I, I'd obviously, I, I didn't know at the time. I'd played 86 consecutive games. I was at the most. I only wow. seen this on Sky last year. Um, I seen it on Sky. It come up one of your one of the players. No, it was about two years ago now. And it came up with the lad's name. And it said the most consecutive. Oh gosh. All right, we most consecutive on the on the ticker tape at the bottom, the most consecutive players in a Barnsley shirt since two thousand and six. Chris Duker, eighty six in wow. brackets, and I was like, wow. So the first game I missed would have been me eighty seventh would have been Huddersfield second playoff away. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I had a bit of a bad taste in my mouth with that. Um, what do you think was the thought through... process behind behind you not playing that game? Um, there was a little bit. I, I, I hadn't played well in the first leg understandably, but I'd felt after the, I'd played obviously every game in that season and I'd, and I'd a, had a pretty successful season personally. I'd scored about, I think I'd scored 11. Um, that's plenty of assists, but I think I deserved the chance to play in the second leg from what I'd done in the previous, obviously 86 that allowed me to play every game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I'd had a little bit of a thing with the contract issue. Um, I was out of contract the year before everyone else because I'd only signed like 15 months when I come. So I'd signed another year. And the chairman wanted to sort some stuff out before and I, I sort of stepped back from that. I don't know if that had an influence. I don't know. Only Andy Ritchie would know. And then obviously we're going, we, we won, which was great. And then we went into the final and I was on the bench, which was a bit disappointing again after 86 games consecutive, of really. Of course. But you played your part in that ultimately. Yeah. I, I, well, I played my part in the um, in the semi final. I yep. tripped up their mascot. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> it seems to <laughs> a, quite a lot of um, quite yeah, a lot I've of people that. sort of talk about it. So when right. when Huddersfield scored <laughs> to equalise, I was warming up and it was lashed down. And their their um, Terry was sprinting down the line with his arms up, and I was just me had a. On, <laughs> So obviously, I'm sat on the bed or two chipped them up, and he went he went skidding through the mud. So we we just Huddersfield have equalised. They've come back to the the, the kick off. Next minute, the police are coming out from the tunnel. He's gone and said to the police um, that I've assaulted them. So Andy Ritchie's fuming with them scoring, and then he's having to deal with the police. One of his players <laughs> just assaulted apparently the. Um, Huddersfield Terrier so it was all going off in the dugout I was starting to dug out absolutely crying <laughs> laughing, laughing at that. Well, you scored a penalty yeah. in the final just talk us through that moment uh, the way you picked yeah, it so, did you put yourself forward did you walk what did you run uh, what's, the, what, what's, what's the everything just fill us in you hit the nail on the head a minute ago when you said I played me part so I obviously went back to the semi-final done that with the with the um, the Terrier and then we've gone into the final I'm sat on the bench my mate Lee Trundle who played for them who was obviously one of their best players is also sat on the bench so we're looking at each other thinking like both us fuming warming up having a chat I come on the pitch and I, remember, I had a little bit of a wiggle um, and even, remember Kevin McLeod he used to play for um, Swansea yes. he was another lad I knew and I come on he went don't you be doing something like um, out of the bag pulling something out the bag now and I've got it I went on this little dribble and I thought this is this is coming out of the bag, and it didn't quite happen. And after that, I had to. As soon as that final whistle went, I turned. This is no word of a lie. I turned, looked at the goal, picked me spot, ran over to Andy Ritchie and went, "I'm I'm having a penalty. I have to have one." And the the full reason, lads, honestly, the reason I done that is because I didn't feel like I play part and take a penalty. I contributed at all to that season. Yeah. So soon, literally the minute, the second the whistle went, I looked at the goal. There's my spot. Ran over and went, Gaffer, I've got to have a penalty. He went, Brilliant. you're on, bang, got it. And then, and the rest is history. Yeah, um, it was a nice, more of a nice feeling than a happy to score. Nice feeling, not to miss. Yeah. Yes. Join us. We really oh, appreciate it, you guys. Please come back on again. Talk to us some more. Come and have a look. Will, no Maybe come and do a preview or details. a review of Barnsley. Yeah, spot on, buddy. Oh